talked about integration by substitution a week ago, and we just had the introduction, and it works out nicely that we're going to continue talking about that today so I can remind you what it is um, and get a little more practice with it. So last section we did indefinite integrals by substitution. So we were just finding antiderivatives by using u substitution. So today we're going to do um, definite integrals. That's when you have the bounds and the answer is a number because a definite integral represents the area under a curve. An indefinite integral, strictly just an antiderivative, and there are an infinite number of functions that are the answers. Okay. So we're going to ta tackle using in finding definite integrals by substitution, and, and then we're going to look at some weird substitution problems. So here's an example. I'm going to do this two ways. One is technically incorrect. It will get you the correct answer, but um, some, like on some of your quizzes, I wrote, be more careful with your notation, because sometimes it's very common. People will just write, like, the integral from 0 to 2 equals, you know, 10, something like that. This is terrible notation, right, because you need some stuff in here. So anyway, so moral of the story is I'm going to use some bad notation in method 1, and we're all just going to accept it, okay? <clears throat> All right, so I want to find the integral of x times x squared plus 1 cubed from 0 to 2, definite integral from 0 to 2. So remember, if we're using u substitution, the idea is to choose u as the biggest, most complicated thing possible whose derivative or something closely related to its derivative also shows up in the integrand. All right, so what do you want to choose as u? x squared plus 1, great. All right, so then we take du dx, and we get 2x. And then what do I do next? Anybody remember? Solve for dx. So dx is going to be du over 2x. <clears throat> All right, so then we make our substitutions. So this is the integral from 0 to 2 of x times x squared plus 1, that's u. And then dx is du over 2x. And that lets me cancel those two x's. So all I have left after I've canceled is u's. And that is the goal. So this is now the integral from 0 to 2 bring the one half out front, that two is in the denominator, of u cubed du. All right, I have done something bad here. What is my, what is the bad notation I have done here? So the problem is that I'm mixing variables. I've changed my integrand to u's, but 0 and 2 are x values. So I'm going to leave them for now because there's no point in changing them because I'm just going to go back to x after I have finished my antiderivative. I'm just going to go back to x's. So the, the 0 and the 2 aren't going to mess anything up because they're just coming along through the, through the process of using the u's. All right, so this is going to be 1 half times, what's the antiderivative of u cubed? Yeah, u to the fourth over 4. And then we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 2, from x equals 0 to x equals 2. So I can't plug those into the u because those are x values. You plug them in as x's. So I have to do one more step and replace the u with what it equals. So this is going to be 1 half times x squared plus 1 to the fourth over 4. Now evaluated from 0 to 2. Now it's correct. So I've done something slightly bad, slightly bad notation for a couple of steps. I'm just going to accept it. Not a big deal. It will get us the right answer. And, in, and I'll show you in method 2 how to, how to do it all with correct notation but I will, I will allow this. 
All right, so then the fundamental theorem of calculus says that what I need to do now is plug in my 2, plug in my 0, and subtract them. All right, so when I plug in 2, 2 squared is 4, plus 1 is 5, 5 to the 4th is 625, 625 over 4. Okay, I need a calculator. One fifty six and a quarter. Okay, and then when I plug in zero, I'm going to get one to the fourth is one over four is the fourth. So this finally comes out to one fifty six times a half is seventy eight. And we should check. We can just have our calculator do this integral. Math, function integration, put the function first, x times x squared plus 1 cubed, comma x, comma 0, comma 2. 78. Okay, good. We did it right. Okay, here's the good way, the, the correct way to um, not have the notation mix up. All right, so same thing. We're going to let u be x squared plus 1, du dx is 2x, which makes dx du over 2x. Now think of u as a function of x. This is u of x, right? So for any x value, I could get a corresponding u value. So I'm going to change the bounds. So what is u of 0? 1. You just plug a 0 in here, put 0 in for x, and you get 1. And u of 2? 5. Okay, so now I know what the correct bounds should be. So now when I make my substitution, this is going to become the integral from 1 to 5 instead of from 0 to 2. And my final thing after I make my substitution is going to be u cubed du. With the 1 half, yes, thank you. Now, I don't have to change back to x, right? So because I changed the bounds, I don't have to go back to x. I can just find the antiderivative and plug these, because these are u values. So this becomes 1 half times u to the fourth over 4, evaluated from 1 to 5, which is 1 half times, so when I plug a 5 in here, I get 156 and a quarter. And when I plug a 1 in, I get a quarter, and I get 78. No need to go back to the x's. You can do whichever one you like. Whichever one you like better is fine. So if we were being precise about it, when you're doing a u substitution, you do need to change the limits of integration in order for the statement to be true, right? In order to say that my original integral equals this integral, I should have changed the bounds of integration. Otherwise, it's not really true. But we can say, well, I know it's not really true, but I'm going back to x, so I'm just going to leave the bounds. OK, here's a fun one. The integral of tangent x dx. Take a few minutes, think about it yourselves. OK, so I changed my integrand a little bit so that I could have a better uh, selection of functions for which to make u. 
because if you just make u tangent of x, um, nothing cancels, right? Because you then now you introduce a secant squared x into your integrand, and it doesn't cancel with anything. So if you change the integrand a little bit, which sometimes you have to do, not just with trig functions, but with any kind of function, sometimes you manipulate the integrand a little bit. Um, so we just change this to sine x over cosine x, and then you say, oh, that's great, because those are like the derivatives of each other. Derivative of sine is cosine, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So my immediate choice would to let u be sine of x, because the derivative of sine is cosine, and cosine shows up in there perfectly. So then I would say, okay, that makes du dx cosine x, which makes dx du over cosine x. So my integral becomes u over cosine x times du over cosine x. Uh-oh. The cosine x's don't cancel. So this is a bad choice of u, right? If you make all your substitutions and all your x's don't go away, that just means you chose a bad u. You gotta try again. So what's the only other u I could choose? Cosine x. So let u be cosine x, then du dx is negative sine x. So dx is du over negative sine. So now this is the integral sine x over cosine x dx becomes the integral of sine x over u times dx, which is du over negative sine x. And now my signs will cancel. And I have a negative still here, so I'll pull that out of the integral. So this is the integral of 1 over u du, because this u is in the denominator. So it's 1 over u. All right, what's the antiderivative of 1 over u? ln, yep. So this is negative, the ln, the absolute value of u, plus c. And it's absolute value because uh, you can't plug a negative into the ln. OK, and then the last thing I have to do is replace u with what I made it equal at the beginning, cosine x. So this is negative ln of cosine x plus c. There is your general antiderivative of tangent. Okay, so we had an integral without any bounds, which means that we were just looking for the general antiderivative. If you have bounds of integration, your answer is a number. No bounds, the answer is a function. Okay, so sometimes it's not easy to make the substitution work because we have original variables lying around and need to get them all in terms of u. So I've always been bad at recognizing these kinds of weird u substitutions. It, um, I often give up too soon and just say, oh, u substitution's not going to work. But sometimes with just a little bit of extra manipulation, you can force u substitution to work. All right, so um, here's an integral, x squared times radical x minus 1 dx. What do you think? <clears throat> what should we choose as u? x minus 1. Yeah, there isn't a, a typical choice of u where its derivative also shows up in the integrand. But x minus 1, its derivative is 1, right? So we're not going to introduce any, any f new functions in here. Um, and what made you choose the x minus 1? It's got to be some reason. OK, good. Uh, hoping the squared and the square root will cancel later, yeah, yeah. Um, 
and x minus 1 is kind of an inside function, right? Like u substitution tends to undo something you do with when you have a composition. So choosing the inside function is, is a, a good guess for you, even though it's not the typical, the derivative also shows up in there. So if we let u be x minus 1, then du dx is just 1, so dx equals du. All right, so I try to make my substitution now, and I have the integral of x squared times the square root of u du. And now my x squared doesn't cancel, right? I can't get rid of it. But I can, with just a little bit of extra work, I could replace x with something. u plus 1, yeah. If u is x plus 1, that means that x is u plus 1, right? Just a little tiny manipulation. And then I replace my x. So this becomes the integral of u plus 1 squared times u to the 1 half du. Then we're just going to simplify, right? Square this, distribute the u to the 1 half, and we'll just have a um, power rule problem. So this will become the integral of u squared plus 2u plus 1 times u to the 1 half du. Distribute your u to the 1 half. When you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. So this would be u to the 2 plus a half is 5 halves plus 2 u to the 3 halves plus u to the 1 half du. And then we can just use the power rule. Take the antiderivative of u to the 5 halves. It's the reverse power rule. u to the 7 halves. And then normally we would divide by 7 halves, but in the interest of space, I'm going to multiply by 2 sevenths because it's the same thing. And then this is going to become u to the 5 halves, and I'm going to multiply by 2 fifths. And so that's going to become 4 fifths u to the 5 halves. And then this is going to become u to the 3 halves. And instead of dividing by 3 halves, I'm going to multiply by 2 thirds. And then lastly, I should replace all those u's with x minus 1's. Kind of out of space. I'll squeeze it in, though. There's a 2 in front of this u, so when I do 2 over 5 and then I multiply it by this 2 that's already there, I get 4 over 5. Okay, so as I said last class, which was a week ago, use substitution is super important. This is a technique we're going to rely on over and over and over this semester. So it's imperative that you practice this technique to the point of fluency, not just competency, not just like, yeah, I guess I can do it. Um, but you need to be able to do like every kind of problem that involves use substitution. All right, so I have some problems for you to practice with. These first few um, are definite integrals. Um, check your answer with your calculator, but I want you to do these by u substitution 
and the fundamental theorem f of b minus f of a. The last few are the weird substitutions that we just did a minute ago.